401k holders rejoice. The stock market is on fire with all three major indexes seeing between 8 and 14 percent increases so far this year. Pretty darn good. All good news, but for most of us, that means our investment portfolios, well, they're out of whack. Much of our money in stocks and little in bonds. Is it time to rebalance? And if, you, if so, how do you do that? Joining me now on how to rebalance your investments, Alan Haft is a financial advisor and he is the author of You Can Never Be Too Rich. Alan, welcome to the show. Uh, I, I want, we, I, we brought this up because last night on the show, David Bach was with us from Finish Rich and he had this to say about rebalancing. So that, that type of a person who's ridden this bull market, it is a great time to pull back a little bit of those profits and basically like take a trim, cut the hair, trim, trim back a little bit, <laughs> take some profit off the table, enjoy it, enjoy the summer because we will see, by the way, we will see a market pull back this summer. Alan, so, you know, look, I'm one of those people, I've let it ride for a while, and now I'm like 80% stocks in my retirement portfolio, which I think is probably too much. Should I rebalance? And if so, how do I do it? Right. Well, the first thing I think people need to understand is what exactly is rebalancing. So do you mind if I just touch upon that just for a oh, second or two? Oh, please do. Yeah, because well, re what rebalancing does is it gives an investor a, a systematic way to manage their portfolio. It takes the guesswork out of trying to manage your money. And any time you can take emotion and guesswork out of managing your money, it's you put yourself thing. into a much better position. Right. So, so for those that don't understand what rebalancing is, I'm going to make it super simple. Imagine Good. you got a pizza pie. And let's say in that pizza pie, I got four different sectors. I have stocks, bonds, uh, I have U.S. stocks, bonds, emerging markets, and international markets. And let's say the way I set up my portfolio is that each sector represents 25% in each one of those slices of the pie. Well, in a market like this, we might see the U.S. stock market really exploding in growth. So what, people, what a lot of people tend to do is they'll let that ride. They'll let it ride. But yeah. as we all know, market cycles come and go, right, Jerry? So what's up today can be down tomorrow. So instead of just letting it sit there and grow and the chances of it going down at some point in the future, what rebalancing says is you should take emotion out of the equation and take the profits out of that U.S. stock market and use it to buy into other sectors that aren't doing so well. So what, what rebalancing effectively should do, if you, if you don't get emotion in the mix, is it should allow you to sell high and buy other things low. Because one right. thing you can be sure of is something's going to go up and something's going to go down. Oh, you betcha. And I'm usually on the wrong side of that <laughs> equation. And right. I think, I think <laughs> most people, what they do is they just let it ride. They, they don't want to disrupt what's already working. But exactly. and, and you're making decisions here. If you if you're not in in a protected a tax protected uh, portfolio, you're going to pay taxes on this, right? Because you're going to sell right. some stock investments and then put them somewhere else. So these are decisions that can be difficult to make. Should you, at a moment like this in time when stocks have been on a tear, rebalance, or should you do it once a year, once a quarter? How often? Right. Well, I typically say you should do it every 366 days in the best case scenario. And the reason for 366 days is because if you have those gains, and I'm using the U.S. stock sector as the, as, the, as the example, if I have gains in that U.S. stock sector and I sell it one day after the new year, after, one day after the year is complete, then I have a much better chance of reaping the rewards of, of long-term capital gains instead of short-term capital gains. So in the best case scenario, wait a little bit after a year to rebalance, but that isn't always the case. Because let's say right now we've had a couple, we've had about six months of a big tear, a big run-up in that U.S. stock market. And if you're sensing there could be a pullback, like David Bach wisely pointed out, if you're sensing there could be a pullback, then it could be a good time, just whatever the taxes are, take some of that growth right. out of that sector and, and use it to rebuy into you know, things like Europe that's not doing I, so I well. I like timing it to the calendar. Because then you take out all of, you know, your exactly. personal fears and worries and you're just, you, like you say, you take the emotion out of it. I, th I thought that was a very smart thing you said. Here's another rule of thumb. I'm wondering what you think of this. Some people set up allocations. Because the other question is, what are your, what kind of allocation do you have, right? And that's a big right. decision. Right. Some people yeah. say subtract your age from 100. So, you know, let's say 40 minus 100 would be 60% in stocks. Is, is that too easy of a rule? Should be, you be more sophisticated than that? Um, you know, I've looked at a lot of financial planning software you, where you throw in somebody's personal data and it comes up with a, with a, with a phone book that looks like that trying to allocate a portfolio. <laughs> the, rule of, the rule of one, and nobody understands that, so the rule of 100, it actually is a pretty effective way for, uh, for, uh, for 
for, uh, you know, for people to set up a portfolio. But one word about the Rule of 100. The Rule of 100 was designed about 30 years ago. But, because, but 30 years ago, people retired at 65, and everybody presumed they'd be gone by the time they're in the mid-70s. Right That's now, right. People, people living much, much longer. So the rule, I think, in my equation, should be really updated. It should be the Rule of 120, because if you take 120 minus your age, it gives you a better chance to, have, to take away the longevity risk of a portfolio I to like make sure that. you don't outlive your money. I like that. Thanks so much for helping us out today, Alan. Great stuff. Really Thanks enjoyed speaking to you. All Thank right. You. Have a great day. Thanks. Now you bye know bye. how to rebalance your portfolio. Good stuff.